The whole point about this is whether inflation is sticky. Now, you experienced inflation inside your business. You reported this in terms of wages, in terms of some of the costs that you're having to pay. Um, is this part of the problem long term? If it is sticky, the interest rates stay higher for longer. As a result, the prospects of even unemployment become greater, as the Reserve Bank Governor spelled out this week. Yes, Ross, look, looking forward, we still uh, remain quite cautious around the economic outlook and what it means for households. Um, what we're seeing across our businesses is some of the international factors that were impacting cost and inflation, international supply chain, transport costs and so forth. Those pressures are normalising. We're actually seeing some raw material prices come down for a lot of our products. The issues that concern us most at the moment are the the local domestic costs of doing business pressures. So this goes to labour availability, energy cost pressures, also increasing costs of transportation. Then when combined with potentially higher mortgage rates, that is likely to put more pressure on consumers. So what are you doing about wages right now? Because obviously there's a, a changing environment for industrial relations. Uh, the labour shortage is one where you either have to try and find more efficiencies and greater productivity, or indeed you've got to wear those higher costs of, uh, of wages into the future. And then, of course, then the prospect of unemployment starts to rise. Ross, uh, look, I think the, the cost pressures and availability issues around labour, energy, and transportation, on, look, on the positive side, they are all issues that can be addressed through addressing the supply side constraints. We are cautious about some of the potential changes that we could see on the industrial relations side that uh, could lead to significant costs for businesses and a reduction in the flexibility at a time when businesses really need flexibility. So what does that mean for businesses like ours? We need to continue to double down on our efforts to invest in productivity initiatives, keep our costs low. And if we can keep our costs low, we can keep our prices lower for customers, which is going to be really important in the year ahead. What you're just describing to me, though, is the wages prices spiral. And that's precisely what the Reserve Bank, that is precisely what Australia doesn't need, because that is the path to recession. Yeah, and Ross, look, I think spiral, I, I'm not sure. We're certainly not seeing it at a level that I would describe as a spiral, but I think there is a need for some caution and concern about the risks. Uh, as I said earlier, though, I think these are areas that are within the control of, of all of us to, to address, but we really do need to face into some of those supply side and regulatory issues that really add additional cost to business at a time that businesses simply cannot uh, afford to pass higher prices on to consumers. And, of course, now also with the Priceline Pharmacies, you have a thoroughly different avenue of business and one which is based on necessity even during tougher economic cycles. Absolutely. And we're, look, we're really excited about the opportunities within our API and Priceline business. We see a lot of growth ahead within uh, healthcare. Uh, if you step back and say what interests us about health, we see that there is a, a fantastic opportunity to make healthcare more affordable and more accessible. We see there's an important role for pharmacists to play in the provision of healthcare. And with one of the largest networks of pharmacies across the country and a very sophisticated supply chain capability and digital capability, we really look forward to investing further in that business. I just got a final one for you, and that is Bunnings, which is the you know the real powerhouse of, of your business overall. It's the one that generates most of the cash. It seems to me it's almost bulletproof in terms of economic cycles. Is that the way that you see it as well? I know there's other pressures coming in there, but it seems that regardless of which phase of the cycle we're in, people are always gardening, people are always renovating, people are always fixing. Is that the way in which you see it? Well, you're right that there is a real resilience to the Bunnings model, and that goes to the diversity of its product mix and its customer base. And, and often what we experience through some of the tougher economic times is as people may not spend as much money on luxury goods, they may not go out travel, eating out or travelling as much, they spend more time at home. And when you spend time at home, you invariably spend money around the home. And Bunnings has benefited from that. But I think it's important to note the Bunnings team are... You know, they, they are not complacent. They are always trying to improve. They're always trying to innovate the offer. Uh, and that is going to be critical to maintain the growth that we're accustomed to.